All right, Brucham boy, welcome everybody. Uh, ho, 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 what an interesting, interesting day today. And, you know, everything in the world is Mishamayim. We should never question the truth of God's providence upon us. We can investigate it but and learn from it and look into it and ask questions within it. But the truth of it, it's difficult to see how we can say that it's, it isn't so. And I'll tell you like this. I had quite, uh, with everything, gosh me, thank God, Kanina Hara, things are great, but I've noticed, although, although you know, there are different things going on, but with my own Ruchnias, my own, my own spirituality, thank God I had some, some challenges, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, and I made some mistakes, I made mistakes on many different levels, but this is what I want to talk about, Derech Heretz. We know Derech Heretz, Kod Militer. Of course, there's two understandings of what the word Derech Heretz means. The words, two words, there are two words. The term literally means the way of the earth, the way of the land, the path of the land, the road of the land, whatever it is. But the general way that we say Der Heretz means to be polite, to have proper manners, to treat other people with respect. Der Heretz called Militer. Before any type of religious devotions, one has to have Der Heretz. One has to be polite. One has to be a gentleman. As, as Rabbi Bart Sadok says, you have to be a Torah gentleman. You know, he tells a story that there was a man holding the door for a woman and she said, uh, you know, I'm a liberated woman. I, uh, it's this, I don't need you to hold the door for me. And he said, with all due respect, I'm not holding the door for you. I'm holding the door for me, for my position as a gentleman. Showing their heritage, showing respect, being polite, having manners. And... I was not polite to someone this past Shabbos, and I regret it. I don't regret the words that I said, but I regret that I hollered at somebody. And I, if I, I'm, I'm debating whether I should send him a letter, send him an email, or just when I see him, I apologize for hollering. But I'm not going to apologize for what I said. Because what I said was true, and a lot more is true. But I'll apologize for hollering. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm being accused of <laughs> being a heretic, which is a, an irony to me because I admit I'm a sinner. Right now, I'm admitting I hollered at somebody, even if I hollered at a heretic. That's not nice. It's not their hurts cutting with her. It's not the way things are supposed to be. And that was wrong. And then I had another Nisoyan where also I got very upset and maybe was disrespectful to, to one of my Rebbeim. And I deserve Nazifa. I deserve, I deserve uh, to be shunned for that. And I and I certainly want to apologize, and uh, and it's a difficult thing. It's a very very difficult thing. And it, and it's because I'm looking out for him, but still, I have to have respect. And I believe that's why this very interesting little video that someone made on the website uh, YouTube channel that calls itself Heretics Exposed and so they compiled uh, clips from my YouTube videos 
exposing me apparently as a heretic, even though nothing that I said in any of those videos goes against any of the Yud Gimel Ikrim, any of the basic dogmas of our faith, which really aren't even dogmas. But the closest thing that you could talk, call a dogma, and one of my Rebbeim, Harav Meir Belitsky, Zechern Levracha, did refer to the Yud Gimel Ikrim as dogmas. And so I think that could be appropriate to use that term, even though it's certainly controversial. And generally most people would say Judaism is not a dogmatic religion. <coughs> Excuse me. Also quite tired and maybe pushed myself a little too much last week. I'll admit, maybe this week I'll slow down a little bit. In any event, I should. Have, I don't know what this is going on here. Um, nothing was exposed there, right? Meaning, I don't have a paywall for my videos. I want to see if I have some seltzer bottles here. I don't. You know, I know some of my rebellion. <coughs> Excuse me. They need the Parnosa and they keep some of their material perhaps behind the paywall. And I'll admit, uh, I don't I don't pay for it. I don't take it. I, I get enough from what what's uh, in public, I assume. Maybe there would be more if I was behind the paywall. I don't know. I have two in my rebellion, and I know that they, they need the Parnassa, and so they're they're behind the paywall. Um, so they have some some things that are free, and some things behind the paywall. Uh, my YouTube channel, I don't have. I, I think I set up a Patreon account, but I never really figured out how to use it, and I, I prefer not to. I I, I feel very uncomfortable asking people for money for this type of thing for me to just talk on a video while I'm driving you know it'd be one thing if I have to make time out of my even I do the podcast with Rabbi Kiblevich and you know that I have to take time out and it's it's a it's a difficult thing to work with um, and make the time and I don't I don't take money for that either but I, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I make the time for that, and it's difficult to make time for that, and it's all, and it, it, it's somewhat of a strain. But I, I appreciate uh, Rabbi Kivlevich his uh, trust in me to to do that. But anyway, we. I, I don't I, I don't charge for so so what, the reason I'm saying that is that and it's not that I'm tooting my own horn I would love it if I if I got enough views that uh, that eventually um, I get monetized if I get the Google money I don't care but I don't want to take money from you you know if someone sends me I don't say no but usually I send you know it's 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 an amount of money that that is uh, it's mice on something else. I said I send it to Tzedakah, it's mice or whatever else. They send you know I, I send along to someone else. I send I send to Rabbi Bart Sadok, I send to Rabbi Siegel, I send to Ezra Academy, wherever I send. Um, but uh, in any event The point that I'm making here is that nothing was exposed here. <laughs> it's not like there's some secret video of me espousing some kind of heresy that this that this guy exposed. No, he he was dishonest in how he edited some of the things, but it's it's nothing was exposed. You know, it just was what it was. You know. So, uh, and I, and, and, you know, 
some of the things there might be more controversial than others. But I stick really by everything I said. You know, probably the most difficult thing was that for me to say that America, as it's founded, um, in a sense, has a, a, a chashivas and a godless that's superior in a way to Malchus of, of Shlomo Melech and the Chizkiel Melech. And with the tremendous love and respect that I have for my ancestors, Shlomo Melech and Chizkiel Melech, that, that I have for my holy ancestors, King Solomon and King Hezekiah, I love them very much. And I have tremendous, tremendous devotion to them. But there is, in my maybe not so humble opinion, there is a difference. Uh, they're going to keep us here forever. All right, it's been a Shemaya. Good thing I got out a little bit early. There is a, a, a mila and a chashivas, and it's based on what Chazal say and how the Uriah Kodesh explains it. When Chazal say, Chochem Adif Minavi, that a sage has a superiority over a prophet. And that essentially, the formation of these United States. has the edifice of Chochmah over Nevoah. That the, the power of wisdom that is superior to the power of revealed religion. And taking <coughs> the revelation of revealed religion, and extrapolating it through wisdom. And so when we say, and so, I, and, and so that is the meaning of what I'm saying. Certainly, of course, there is a chashivas, there is a greatness and a, and, a, and a distinction that those kingdoms had over what we have. But I, I think certainly there's no way to say otherwise that Hashem wants us here where we are right now, those of us who are here in this time and this place, at this time and this place. And so Shlomo Melech himself said, don't ask about the old days saying that they were better than this. Because you do not ask that out of wisdom. That's in Koheles. That is, uh, that's in, in Ecclesiastes. Meaning to say that we have to make the most of what we have now as opposed to pining for something lost in the past. But the thing is that it's not lost in the past because we've built upon that past. And so all the godless, all the greatness of Shlomo Melech and Chizkiah Melech, of King Psalm and King Hezekiah, King David, King Josiah, are great kings that we respect. We are standing on the shoulders of giants. And, and the thing was, was that Jefferson and, and Franklin were also standing on their shoulders. So, and we're standing on their shoulders. And yes, we make mistakes, we backslide, we go back and forth, both as individuals and on a national level. But sof kol sof, God has us here now, at this very moment in time, in this very place and space, for a reason that is just as important as why he had Shlomo Melech and Chizkiel Melech in their time and their space. Um, of course, that could be said about anything. So, but then, what is that uh, about anything and any and everything? 
So obviously there's an issue with that. And then in the end, the answer though is, is like I said, you know, like the Ksushis Levi says, Vishamu Vene Yisrael is a Shabbos, Lassos is a Shabbos. That the children of Israel, it says in Exodus, the children of Israel observe the Sabbath in order to make the Sabbath. Kedushas Levi, the Heilige Berdich of Arova, for Levi Yitzchuk, Musar Sashem, and Berdich of Schusi Galenim Kulisolomain. He said, he taught us that each Shabbos gives the energy for the next Shabbos. And so it's, it, it, it's a snowball effect, it becomes higher and higher and greater and greater. So therefore, uh, Rav Moshe Wolfson, Zulkazunzayin, in Borough Park, he he says every Shabbos this is the greatest Shabbos ever was in history, because it, it's it, it it's compounded from all the previous Shabbosos in, in, in the previous time, and so the same thing. But again, it's the same thing we said. But but again, what is the Mila? that the United States has over France or Israel or Japan or Nepal or Saudi Arabia and and again I think it is the Chochmah that the Rabbi Nishalolam put into the foundation of this country that's unique in the annals of world history And that, and that's what we're talking about here. Um, but the other things uh, that I, uh, you know, and I, and I looked at the list of, of the people who are being called heretics. So one of them is Taka heretic. Uh, David Wolpe's a heretic. You know, you don't you, you don't need me to tell you that he's Koifer and UTS Mitzrayim. Uh, he, he denies the exodus, which is a fundamental concept. Let's say he's really a heretic. And he does a lot of other things uh, as part of his ministry that are not part of our tradition. And not only that, but he's supposed to be a conservative rabbi as far as I understand. And he's really not even following, from what I understand, the standards of the conservative movement that does have certain halachic standards that may be more lenient or liberal than our standards in our communities, but are nonetheless halachic. And, and, and I, I've heard that he does things that are not halachic. So he's really a heretic. But the others are all orthodox. And uh, it's... And, and orthodox, I don't just mean as part of a movement, because orthodoxy really isn't a movement. But I'm saying they're doctrinally orthodox. And even if they take different approaches within the doctrine, they're within that living, breathing Torah. But going back to even Wolpe, who is a heretic, Derek Heretz Kadmolatur. Treat people with respect. Treat heretics with respect. Uh, Rabbi Bart Sadok had a video about this uh, recently, and that's, and that's the approach that I take. And so maybe next this guy is gonna make a video about how how Rabbi Bart Sadok is on is on the list. Um, I uh, good for you, but you haven't exposed me for anything. Uh, you did take things out of context. You accused me of Chilul Shabbos. It's very clear. You can, anybody can see that the video that they're talking about was posted Erev Shabbos, so it was taken Erev Shabbos, it was not a video taken on Shabbos, I did not make any videos on Shabbos uh, at Monster Bash, um, I didn't, you know, uh, what else, you know, I mean, in the old days I used to record Matzei Shabbos before I finished Shabbos, but a lot of Tzadikim do that, uh, you know, all the rabbits do that, so that's not, that's not strange, um, so, again, I do my own thing, that I sing a, a hymn from Mr. Rogers, 
that has nothing Christological about it, I stand by that. Did I say heaven and hell are the same place? Al derech moshel, al derech drush. You know, I, I believe the what what Chazal said, what what the Yud Gimel Ikrim said that there's reward and punishment, and there's harva einish. That's a dogma. But how exactly it's meted out, and how we understand it, how a lot of these things are obviously mashalim and they're not meant to be taken literally, and you don't confuse the mythos and the logos. People should understand that on their own. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. But we're dealing with Klenikam. We're dealing with small-minded people, people with katnus to moichen. They don't understand basics. And, and, and I believe that I was introduced to this because of my own chesroinus this week, and my own nesioinus in Der Heretz. Sai Der Heretz, on one hand, earlier to an apicarus. And Sai, with, with the bigger problem of Derech Eretz, to my Rav. And I have to rectify that. I have to figure out with Chochma how to rectify it. But uh, that's the situation. Thank you for watching. God bless you. And I, and I do, if anybody's watching, I, I ask forgiveness from everybody. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. We'll see you later.